Hey, what's up, my friend? The Crystal Lim here from Mixdown Online. Exciting video for you today. We're going to talk about uh, ways we can speed up our workflow when working in Cubase. So that means working with macros. I'm not sure if you're familiar with what macros are in Cubase, but if you're not, you are going to enjoy this video. So I'm going to share with you my favorite macros that I work with in Cubase and also show you how you can build your own macros. And on top of that, I'm going to need to hear from you. More on that later. Cubase offers a bunch of commands we can work with uh, when producing music, mixing, recording in Cubase. There's already a bunch of Cubase key commands assigned to your computer keyboard by default when working in Cubase. But on top of that, the Cubase also has macros. And macros is very simple to understand. It's the combination of several key commands all together that you can assign into one command that you can also assign to a shortcut on your computer keyboard or MIDI controller, which is a time saver. Okay, so let's jump in Cubase and check this out. Okay, now in Cubase, let's go under Edit on top and down to Key Commands. Okay, so this is where uh, we have the list of all the commands uh, that are part of Cubase. Okay, they are all within different folders uh, and this is where you will find them. And any of those commands can be assigned to a computer keyboard shortcut or your MIDI controller. And at the bottom of this key commands window, we have the macros. Now, there's some macros that are already part of Cubase, uh, like the duplicate selected tracks without data, uh, which is actually pretty cool. So you know what, let's go click on OK. Let's go into this session. So let's say, you know, I'm recording this track and uh, I want to keep the same parameters. Uh, I'm not even sure what I have here. OK, let's say I have this guitar our amp activated on this track and I want to use uh, the same uh, channel with the same guitar uh, plugin on a different track to record a second part. What I can do is to duplicate that track by removing the audio and automation and all the data within the same track. So let's try it out. So I'm going to select the track, go down to edit and then go to macros and select uh, this one, duplicate the selected tracks without data. And there you go. Now I have the same channel with my insert, the same plugin insert on the channel without any data. So if there was some automation on this, uh, on this channel uh, or audio like I had, that has been removed. So very cool. So this is by default part of Cubase. So let's check what else we have here. Uh, export audio mix down whole song, move a selection to new track version. Uh, that is also pretty nice. Uh, select tracks to new folder and add group channels. Okay, so let's try it out. Uh, let's say um, I'm gonna select these tracks here, okay? All, all of these. I'm going to go down to edit, go down to macros and then select uh, selected tracks to new folder and add group channel. Okay, so now I have my group channel that I am going to name and I'm going to write test under it. And there you go. So now I have these tracks that I selected part of this folder and that are also routed into this group channel which is pretty cool. So, you know, with only one uh, click. Now you can assign uh, any of these macros on a computer shortcut. And we'll check that out with some of my macros right away. Now I have some macros of my own that I uh, set up myself uh, that I use when mixing and recording. And some of those I'm gonna share with you. Uh, okay, so the first is manual de and this is a very, very good one. So if I click on this one, I'm gonna just open this little uh, folder here and I have the list of key commands included on this macro. Uh, so first of all is transport locators to selection edit split range, okay, and uh, transport nudge plus frame. So I don't, I mean, I'm not going to go into the details of all these uh, uh, commands, but you can actually pause the video, 
take a screenshot or just list that up if you want to try it out if you find that this macro is cool enough for you to uh, uh to check out so okay what that does is very very simple so let's say you know i want to work on uh, let's go with this vocal now this is not mixed it's only a recording but let's uh, tame down i don't want to fight the fight okay so like this f let's say i want to fight i want to bring that part down very very easy with this macro what i'm going to do is to uh, click on my uh, range selection tool okay and then let's go to edit go down to macro and go down to manual the esser i also have a shortcut for this one that I set up, which is uh, command shift and uh, uh, two from the keypad. And there you go. And now I have a region that was created within that range that I selected and a drop of 6 dB. I don't want to fight the long. Okay, so now. I don't want to fight the the F sound is a bit more smoother, okay? So this is very, very handy and it makes the work very, very easy and fast if I need to like tame down one part of an audio, like, you know, this kind of a F sound or some intense sibilance that I would need to manually tame down. I'm gonna use this macro to do so. Uh, so this is a very cool example of a macro. Again, if you want to uh, check it out and try it out on your own, you can just go back in the video, pause this section, and just copy that macro, those commands, into your Cubase. Now, the next macro I wanna share with you is called add mono audio with effects. So that means uh, that I'm gonna use this macro to create an audio channel, a mono one, with also an effects channel, already routed with this audio channel. So all ready to go and start recording right away. And I have a shortcut for this one also. And there you go. So vocal verb, let's call this one voc verb, click on okay. Let me check if I have some audio from the microphone. There you go. And from this point, you know, I can add a lot of space to this reverb if I want to. Um, I can also choose any other types of reverbs. Um, let me show you how I did that. Okay, so if we look at this add mono audio with effects, it's very simple, three commands, add track, audio mono edit monitor which means that it's going to activate the monitor button right away so you'll be able to monitor yourself within cubase and then i go to mixer add track to selected effects channel and that creates the effects channel routed directly to this audio channel which is pretty pretty cool Sorry about that. Let me turn that phone off. You're out. So again, if you want to just pause the video and uh, take note, you can do it right now. Okay, the next one uh, is, uh, okay, it's a more complicated one and it's a reverse reverb. Okay, this is actually pretty cool. I made a video on this one a few years ago. I'm gonna link it down below if you wanna watch it, where I go into uh, more details about uh, uh, the whole commands that I have here on this one. Uh, so transport locators to selection, um, edit mute events, a project duplicate track. So, you know, there's a bunch of different commands. It's a more complicated type of macro, uh, but what it does is actually very, very cool. Okay, so let's uh, try it out and uh, let me check on which shortcut I have this one assigned to. And at the same time, let me show you how to assign a shortcut, uh, a key command from your computer keyboard straight for a macro. Now, on the top 
top section of the key commands window uh, in the commands section uh, one of the folders uh, is going to be called macro and there you go all my macros are listed right here so everything I create uh, down below is going to be listed on top uh, so the one that I'm working with right now is the reversed reverb and it, it is assigned to command plus shift plus uh, the number three from the keypad on the right side of my uh, keyboard there you go okay what I'm gonna do let me check for a drum loop that I have here um, let's go with this one. Okay, I want to add a reverse effect on this channel. That can be good for a reverse symbol, uh, a reversed effect on a piano. Uh, in that case, what I would do is I would uh, uh, just have that one sound that I want to reverse on its own channel. Uh, and then I would copy that over. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the whole reversed effect on the whole track. Okay, so I'm going to select uh, this event and this channel. I'm going to click on my key command and uh, check what's going to happen. Now it's processing for all the events that I have on this channel. All right, and there you go. Listen to this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, let me just unmute this and uh, let's blend this with the original recording. See how that goes. That's pretty cool. So it's a very easy way to just reverse one event or several events on the same channel. So again, you can go back, pause the video, take notes, and I'm gonna link the video where I talk about this macro in detail down below. Now, another very cool uh, key command that I have here is uh, when recording MIDI. Okay, so MIDI duplicate an octave up or down. Uh, this one is assigned to uh, same key commands, a shift command and uh, six on my keypad and seven to go down an octave. Okay, so let's try it out. Uh, but if you want to take a look on how I build that one up, very simple, three commands only. Edit, select all edit copy and edit paste at origin and then navigate add up that is going to bring all the notes up an octave and uh, let's check how that goes if i go with this one here okay let's go with this midi event i'm going to double click go into the midi editing window and uh, let's try this one out so i want to bring all of these notes an octave higher. So I'm just gonna keep those notes on top for the sake of this tutorial and let's try it out. And there you go, same notes, an octave above. All right, let's try the other way around, an octave lower. Okay, so it's a very fast way just to copy notes an octave higher or lower uh, using this macro. Uh, the next one is probably the last one for today's video. Uh, let me check what I have. Uh, it's called the crop plus fade in and out. That can be very useful when editing. It crops the range of an audio event and then it, uh, it's gonna apply a fade in and fade out on that same event. Okay, I'm gonna use this vocal recording. Okay, so let's say I just wanna keep this portion of the event. So I'm gonna click on my key command and there you go. So basically what happened is we got rid of everything that was not selected within that event. And on top of that, uh, it added a fade in and fade out on that cut, okay, which is pretty useful. Uh, so again, this is a very good way to crop an audio event 
for one specific section and making a clean cut at the same time. So those are my main macros that I love to work with. Um, and I think I'm gonna dive even deeper uh, by creating new macros because it's so powerful and there's so much you can do uh, if you're creative you know um, if you want to know how you can create your own macro it's very simple everything is done right here so to create a new one uh, you click on new and uh, i'm gonna call this one cs1 macro and from this point i can just go on top uh, on the um, the key command list that i have and just select whatever I need, okay? So if I want to uh, uh, to go with a new group channel, for example, I can just search for group, search for the main, the main words. Oh, okay, in this case, I'm landing right away on the group channel. Uh, and if I wanna add this command to it, I can just uh, click on add. And there you go, so now I have my first command. And then let's say I wanna add an effects, like an effects channel. Uh, for this group, let me try this out. I know that on the previous uh, uh, key command, if I look closer, now I can see that uh, add selected effects channel is under mixer. Okay, so if I look, let's say you don't know this, uh, you want to search for effects channel. And there you go, mixer, add track, and I'm going to have add the track to selected effects channel. And there you go, I'm going to click on add and that simple okay let's try this this is again this is not even one that i would use but let's just try if it works just to test it and there you go group let's name it test and test verb and there you go i have my my test group that is routed into the test reverb okay so just by creating a a macro and then I can assign a shortcut for this macro and uh, I'm good to go so it's pretty much it you know and if you want to delete the macro you select it you click on delete and it's gone if you want to make a second version of a macro uh, let's say the reverse reverb I can actually duplicate this one uh, and make some modification uh, if I just want to tweak things around for another type of tasks uh, that I want to do with this um, or with this new macro that is based on the original one so you can duplicate an existing macro and just tweak that around also which is quite nice now here's what I want you to do if you already work with macros I want you to share your macros with me. You know, like your favorite macro that you like to work with on a regular basis in Cubase. So just give me a brief description of the use of your macro, how you like to use it and what you use it for when working in Cubase, and also the list of commands we need to recreate your macro. And what I'm gonna do afterwards is to select some of your macros and make a dedicated video trying them out in a Cubase session. So this is gonna be quite fun. So you can leave everything in the comment section down below. And also if you have any other comments or questions, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. And by the way, we just reached 90,000 subscribers on this channel. So we are just 10,000 subscribers away from 100,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel. So first of all, thanks a lot uh, for being here. And if you're not subscribed yet to this channel, please just click on that subscribe button below and let's get together and reach that 100K. All right, talk to you soon. Take care.